each and every part of the sadhana that we do is but to surrender myself, give up myself. And the moment we can give up ourselves, the ego, the ego, fully, we are liberated. We are free. his love, his dedication, his everything to the Guru. And actually, for the disciple, every day is a Guru Purnima. Because it's not only that we have to give or surrender unto the Guru whatever we have on one particular day, but actually once we accept someone as our guru, we must, and after we surrender, but this, you know, surrender thing is not so easy. It's very easily said, but actually it is easier said than done. It's very easy to say, but it's very, very hard to surrender. Till we have our ego, we cannot surrender. Because this ego, you know, it resists us. It doesn't allow us to uh, let itself bow down before someone. Because it always has this feeling that what do I have less? You know, the person to whom I will surrender, he is just like me, you know, having two hands and two legs and two eyes and everything what I have. Maybe he knows a little bit more than uh, what I do, but that doesn't make much of a difference. So that is ego, which actually is a big, big, big hindrance in this path of surrendering ourselves. So, bit by bit, we have to do this, you know. We have to learn this process or teach our mind, train our mind to surrender. And then, a bit by bit, this ego, because getting rid of this ego is really, really, really very tough. It's really very tough. We may feel like, okay, I have given everything to Bhagavan. I have surrendered everything to my master. But it's not, not so easy. It's not that easy to surrender everything to the master, to the Guru. When everything goes well, it seems okay. Everything what I have, you know, this mind, this and this body and this mind, this whatever I have, it's for the Guru. But when there is this adverse condition, when we go into a, or when we face adversities, then we can see our mind, then we can see the uh, tendency of our mind or what our mind actually clings to, you know. And it is so clever, the mind, it's so cunning, actually, it's not clever, it's cunning. There is a difference between cleverness and cunningness. It's very cunning, like a fox, you know, that when I hold myself back, and doesn't give that to the Guru, my mind will give a logic for that. It will give beautiful examples and beautiful logics in order to prove that what I have retained to myself or what I have kept to myself actually is needed. It is very much necessary. And 
that is the trick of the mind which it always plays with us so surrender is a process actually there are very rare very 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 rare aspirants or disciples who can actually surrender at once or the moment they say that okay master i surrender myself unto you you know there was a very big scholar who used to come or he used to visit bhagwan when he was in uh, guwahati in goshala maliga when we had uh, our headquarters in the railway quarters of bhagwan so he was a very great scholar and um, very educated person and uh, had a lot of you know this uh, spiritual studies he studied uh, upanishads and everything at length you know and he used to attend our programs and he also used to speak in our programs give speeches and he used to visit bhagwan also in his railway quarters so he was the principal of many schools government schools so one day he came to visit bhagwan in his railway quarters and bhagwan was speaking on surrender and all these things and all of a sudden he said that i surrender myself at your feet and bhagwan looked at him and said in a very serious tone that you have just altered a word you have just just spoken a word surrender because surrender is not so easy and you know actually it's uh, not very nice to hear but the more we have the tougher it becomes to surrender the more we have uh, money name fame education the tougher it becomes to surrender because i have so many things you know. and the person to whom i will surrender is nothing to me in respect of this worldliness but then i have to surrender to you so it's it's really very tough you know Giddish Chandra Ghosh he was a very ardent devotee of Sri Ramakrishna and when he went to Sri Ramakrishna Sri Ramakrishna told him that uh, you come to me and you chant the name of God in the morning and in the evening at least he said I cannot do that because uh, he used to uh, uh, do plays in the theatres so he said that see i am involved in such a profession that um, i am even not myself sure where i will be in the morning and in the evening so it's not possible for me to chant the name of god in the morning or in the evening <clears throat> then he said then what would you do then surrender yourself give me the power of attorney that i will do everything on behalf of you he said yes it's okay that means surrender that whatever you have you give it to me and i will do on your behalf he said he was very happy because he has to do nothing and all will be done by sri ram everything his austerity is you know chanting and whatever to uplift himself in the spiritual path so he was very happy okay and he said he has done it's fine i will and i have given you the power of attorney you can do on my behalf and he was very happy that sri ram krishna has taken this uh power of attorney for on behalf of me on my behalf so things were going on fine so one day in that small room of sri ramakrishna in the in dakshineshwar 
another devotee of Sri Ramakrishna came to visit him and there was also at that time Girish Chandra Ghosh. So that devotee told, asked Girish Chandra that Girish, uh, come to my place one day, you know, visit me once in my house. And Girish Chandra Ghosh said, okay, I will. I will surely visit you. And all this was happening in front of Sri Ramakrishna. As soon as Girish Chandra Ghosh said that, okay, I will visit your house, Sri Ramakrishna interrupted that Girish, he said, yes, master. He said, how did you give your word that you will visit his house? Did I give you the permission? Did you ask me? He understood that he has committed a mistake. You, because I have surrendered myself unto you. So the moment I surrender myself unto you, everything of mine is yours. I cannot move a step. I cannot take a step without asking you. And that is why this small word, surrender, we say samarpan. This samarpan or surrender is very big word. Once we surrender, everything of mine is the Gurus. So, this particular day, Guru Purnima, which is the birth day of Vyasdev, who compiled the Vedas, who wrote the Puranas, who wrote the Mahabharata. So, it is his birthday and his birthday is celebrated as Guru Purnima. So, this is uh, the most auspicious day in the spiritual world because it is this day. But again I say that actually in the life of a disciple, each and every day is a Guru Purima because each and every day we learn bit by bit to surrender ourselves at the feet of the Master, at the feet of the Guru. But this is the special day when we give or offer everything of ours, including myself, at the feet of the Guru, that, O oh Master, I am yours. I am yours. And this is the best we can offer. You know, Maharshi Raman, he was a great saint who lived in the south of India and uh, a devotee told that uh, how can we give everything of ours to you know at the feet of the God so things were going in this discussions were going in this direction so you know my this is yours my that is yours so he said the best way is give up yourself give or surrender yourself to him then everything, whatever you have, is His. So, the main subject revolving whom there is everything, you know, my money, my this, my that, my position, my house, my everything, whatever revolves around that person, my ego, myself, if I can surrender myself unto Him at His feet, then whatever I have, good, bad, no discretion, is his masters. And actually there is, if we can surrender ourselves, the moment we can really surrender ourselves at the feet of the Guru, we are in the real sense liberated. Because my ego is the hindrance in the path of realizing the self. 
the moment I surrender myself at his feet. That means, if it's a proper surrender, again I say it's very tough, that ego is gone. I'm liberated. So, total surrender or surrender in its real sense implies liberation, implies salvation. That is why surrender is very tough, easier said than done. But that must not bring any frustration or any despair or a sense of hopelessness in us that, oh, we cannot do, then what's the use of practicing? No, each and every day we must practice to give up, give up this ego, give up this ignorance. And you know, this ignorance, everything is with this ego, you know, with this very ego. So, each and every day, or each and every part of the sadhana that we do, is but to surrender myself, give up myself. And the moment we can give up ourselves, the ignorance, the ego, fully, we are liberated. We are free. We are free. And that is why this Guru Purnima is so important. So, Bhagavan also said that in the life of a disciple, each and every day must be a Guru Purnima day. Each and every day. Because each and every day we must train our mind, we must learn, we must teach ourselves how to give, how to surrender. 